that we're going to do an example about Major League Baseball. So in a Major League Baseball field, the fence is about 325 feet away from the batter. So here's the batter. He's got his bat. And then here's the fence at the end. Fence is eight feet high. Let's say the batter swings and hits the ball at an initial height of four feet. So he hits the ball with a speed of the initial at an angle of 15 degrees. So here goes the ball and we want to know what speed does he have to hit the ball at for it to make it over the fence? So if we're given initial height equals four feet, we know that this final height equals eight feet. And we know that this distance it needs to go is 325 feet. And initial angle equals 15 degrees. We need to find the minimum speed required to clear fence. How fast does the batter need to hit the ball to make a home run? We know that this point that it has to reach is x, y. We can find that point because we know it's 325 and 8. And then the starting point, x initial, y initial, we can also find. So if we know x initial, y initial, x, y, and theta, we have to find v initial. What equations are possible? Well, vy we don't care about at all. So let's get rid of those. Then we have to find the initial, but t is also involved in both of these equations. So what we need to do, solve one of these equations out for t, and then plug in and solve the other equation for v initial. So we'll start here. x minus x initial equals v initial cos theta times t. x minus, x initial is zero, so x minus zero. So this here is zero. Four, and this here is 325.8. So this equals v initial cosine 15 degrees times t, which x is 325. So then we get 325 over cosine 15. the initial equals t. So now that we have this for t, we can go plug it in over here and get the initial. So we'll have y minus y initial equals the initial sine theta times t minus one half g, t squared, 
y final is 8, y initial is 4. So we'll have v initial, sine 15 degrees, times t, which is this whole thing. So times 325 over v initial cosine 15 minus g, which in this case, because we're using feet, we have to use a 32.2 feet per second squared over 2 times t squared, which is going to be 325 squared over the initial squared cosine 15 squared. So then 4, these cancel, equals 325 tangent 15 minus, we simplify this out, we'll get uh, 16.1 times 325 squared over the initial squared cosine squared 15. And we have to solve out for the initial squared. So 4 minus 325 tangent 15 equals negative 16.1 times 325 squared over v initial squared cosine squared 15. So then v initial squared equals 16.1 times 325 squared over, let's see, 4 minus 325 tangent 15 degrees, uh, this is a negative, from that. And then that has to be multiplied by this cosine squared. Okay, so that's the initial squared. But if we want to find the initial, then we take the square root. Equals 148 feet per second. So required launch speed is 148 feet per second. Now, if we, to put this into context, normal decent Major League Fastball pitch is 100 miles per hour. So we convert that to feet per second, then we have, let's see, 5,280 feet per mile, one hour, 3,600 seconds. equals 147 feet per second. So in order to hit a home run, the batter has to actually hit the ball faster than it got thrown at him. Okay, so that just shows like, that's one of the reasons that it is really hard to hit a home run. You don't see them so often because you gotta get some really solid contact on that ball in order to hit it back faster than it came at you. Now we'll look at a simulation of this and see. So you can see here, I put in values for gravity, initial height, distance, final height, and then I put in the 148 and the initial angle. So we'll see here if it is 148 if the ball goes over the fence. So you see, the ball clears the fence. That little bitty difference can really keep you from hitting the home run. So we try 147. You can see 
there's that little bit at the top, it didn't quite make it over. But then if we go something a little bit higher, say 150, you see there's definitely room.